Good morning and welcome to She's a Force of Nature. My name is Jackie Heider and I am the co-chair of the Outreach Committee for the Natural Resources Women's Network, along with Katie Gerber, who will also be helping us out today. Today we will be meeting and getting to know Janet Steele, who is an electronic design specialist, and Heidi Hetzel Evans, who is a communications manager. If you have any questions during their presentation, please utilize the Q&A box. But before Janet and Heidi tell us more about what they do at ODNR, Katie, can you please tell us a little bit about the Natural Resource Women's Network? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Jackie. Um, good morning, everyone. The Natural Resources Women's Network is a group of employees here at ODNR who have come together to provide networking and professional development opportunities for the women who work here. But we also focus on getting the word out to young women about all of the amazing career opportunities that ODNR has to offer. Um, and with that, I'll send it over to you, Heidi, and you can um, pull up the presentation and get started. Thanks, Katie. I really appreciate it. In fact, just on behalf of Janet and I, I want to thank both Katie and Jackie for inviting us today, and also Alyssa, who's not here, who's home with her new baby. Um, it's it's been really fun, I think, for both of us to look back on our careers, kind of walk down memory lane. So I know that Janet is queuing up the content. Um, we put together a little PowerPoint. We're each going to talk about ourselves a little bit and how we got where we are today. And then we're gonna, um, we've kind of decided to do a little TED talk, if you will, about uh effective communications and kind of rules we've learned and advice that we've received or we've given along the way uh so it's really for folks in all levels of their um career but we're really um speaking to maybe women who are younger in their careers and things that just sharing some things that we came across so as we cue that up all right we're great we can go ahead and um go to the next slide janet so I'm Heidi Hetz Levins. I'm currently the communications manager with Ohio State Parks and Watercraft, and it may be one of the best jobs you can have at ODNR, or at least I think so. Um, one of the, the things I wanted to put together is um, I have already passed my 30th year at the Department of Natural Resources, and I was, as I was talking about that earlier today, I never thought I'd say more than two or three years. And so it really surprised me when I started going back through finding photos and thinking about things, uh, both challenges and successes I've had. But the one thing I had to share was that if you noticed on that slide, there are a ton of offices. I have had such a diverse career at ODNR. And I will say I have loved pretty much every minute of it, even when I found myself doing things I never thought I'd be paid to do. But the one thing that really puts everything together is I always had a communications role. So I began as an information writer one, climbed to a two, and then a public information specialist, a publications editor, a public information officer. And then when I came to um, Parks and Watercraft, I became a natural resources administrator. So I really am definitely that sort of it's not at all traditional anymore to follow the career path I did, but what I found as I went through the diverse divisions that I worked for, I was able to build on each experience along the way. So whether you you stay at one department, one division, um, one company, or if you change companies, I think because I was constantly changing, I've learned a lot about um, sort of staying flexible. So next slide. So uh, I didn't tell you much about myself. I grew up back east, so I've been uh, I talk a little faster sometimes than my fellow Ohioans, although my friends back home will tell you I've totally slowed down, which I think is funny. And uh, I came here to go. I came here transferred to finish up school and had every intention of hiking it back to the East Coast. Well, I found the love of my life here, got married, and actually, when I started at ODNR, I was unmarried, and by the 
by the time I accepted the job, I was married. So I'm also proud to say I was probably one of the first uh, hyphenated names. And that was one of the things I remember about that is how difficult nobody knew what to do when email came around. Uh, so I have like a bazillion aliases in the email. So, uh, but anyway, one. So you can see there's an array of pictures here. The first thing I want everyone to take away is that you should have fun at work. And every of those pictures, oddly enough, they're also they show a challenge for me. So I'm going to start with the personal challenge and then I'll work to the professional challenge. The personal challenge is that picture in the middle is myself with my two boys. So they're 26 and about to turn 23. So clearly I raised my children as I raised my career, so to speak. So I did that together, but I cannot um, underscore enough that there's a real challenge being a full time mom and a full time professional, no matter what your career is, no matter what your career path is, there's choices you're going to have to make. Um, I would say one choice I did was I purposely stayed maybe in place while my children were younger so that I had a job that would balance being the room mom and there was a year I was room mom, but I could never have done it if I hadn't stayed in one place for a few years. So I found for me um, that was a challenge because I had to challenge work and um, children. And I think 25 years later, uh, state government companies are doing a better job of um, giving allowances. But let's face it, when there's an important meeting or project, it really doesn't matter what is happening at home. You have to be able to be at work. So that is a challenge and I was happy to I was lucky enough to share that with my husband as well. So I definitely had help in that. So when you see the picture of me on the left, that is me learning about oil and gas. Uh, this is from the girl who got a D in geo geology and natural sciences in high school. So when my mom Whenever I, I ended up being a spokesperson for the beginning of the fracking uh, phase that began in this state a few years, about, about, about 10, 12 years ago. And when you bring that up in my family, they still laugh that I know anything about the ice age, glaciers, or geology. But I do. But I won't go into that now. That was me at a quarry for mineral resources. First time, not the only time, but the first time I had to deck myself out in safety equipment, I can tell you orange is not my color. Uh, so, but seriously, Ohio Department of Natural Resources is a science-based agency. And one of the things, one of my challenges as a communication person, I'm asked to take a message that may be difficult, may be hard, um, and translate that in a way that's understandable for a really wide range of, of people. And what I have found through the year is the mentors that I have had in the department. So I encourage you to both find a mentor, but also be a mentor. And, and I'm hopeful that I've been able to be a mentor um, to some of the, the staff that I've worked, coworkers and interns that I've worked with. And then lastly, um, a couple of these on the right are kind of my favorites. Um, that is me in blue at the Ohio State Fair where you talk every minute of every hour you're scheduled. And that can be really tough for an introvert, uh, which is a secret. I'm totally one of those extroverted introverts. And later on, I'll show you why. And then that is I got to create. I did I, over the years. I've done some great creative work and you wouldn't think it, you know, communications. It's news releases and publications, but I helped create um, at the time the Division Recycling Litter Prevention's uh, mascot, uh, Lucky the Ladybug, the first lady of litter prevention. And they're still using her. And it is really exciting that the thing, projects you worked on could still have life even when the program might be gone or you might be gone from the program. Uh, so I, I, I said work can be fun, so I think that's a, that's a good way to step out to the next slide. I will not spend too much time on this slide, but I am not a numbers girl, but I love, because I'm not a numbers girl, uh, I don't really balance my checking account. I just check my balance a lot. I wish I was a better numbers person, but I will say 
I decided to kind of, I started with the top 10 list and I ended up doing this funny thing. And I do, I believe I hold the department record for most office moves because six of those office moves I think happened in a two year period. Um, but really what I wanted to show you was flexibility. When it comes to work, flexibility is one of my favorite words because you have to be flexible. You never know what's around the corner, but also you have to um, exercise flexibility in your thought process and not, you know, I thought I would have one kind of career and it completely took me by surprise that at the end of my career, I have made way more moves in the last 10 years than I did in the first 20. And I think what this has taught me is I feel like I've stayed young in my career, even though I'm an old lady and I've been around forever, because every time I went to a new division, I tried something new. And that's it. Uh, the only other thing I, I want to talk about real quick is that when I began 30 years ago, I was often the only female in the room or women were mostly in jobs like HR, um, administrative support, fiscal. And then slowly as I came on, I started noticing we had more and more women in communications. But now when I look back, I look around, I see women as assistant chiefs, I see women as chief, and we have our, I'm proud to say I'm working under my second female director, and I was there for the first one. And we've come a long way, baby. So on that note, Janet, it's up to you. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. Um, I was great at natural sciences. <laughs> I love rocks. Um, so what you see here are um, um, the blue rock is not actually a natural rock. It's a fake rock. It's created from iron ore uh, mining up on Lake Superior. So it's a fake blue rock, but you find it in nature. And it's one of the beautiful things um, that uh, I've found have helped me, like knowing that I like rocks um, and that I, I like water have helped me put myself into ODNR. So um, Heidi immersed herself directly into the ODNR environment and has found her way here today. Whereas um, my, my my road here has been much more uh, organic. So um, my current children are the two dogs. That's Jackson on top and Arlo on the bottom. And that is the only time Arlo will ever not be top dog. Um, and then the next two you'll see were my other creations, my sons, uh, William who's 21 and Jeffrey who's now uh, 23. So uh, Heidi had, had alluded to the being a mom, raising her kids while she had her, her full-time job. And I was in a position to, um, I wasn't working full-time for ODNR when I started. My path was as an NRS, which is, um, or NRW, I don't even remember which one is the thousand hour position. Like, you, I, I think that's the NR, Yes, isn't it, Heidi? So it has changed. So my guess is it might have been an NRW. Okay. So um, my path into ODNR <laughs> came from being a really smart girl in high school who was good at math and science. And um, I actually... <laughs> I went to college to to be uh, an aeronautical engineer. Now, if you look at me now, and I look at me now, and I looked at myself back then, and um, aeronautical engineering and me, talk about being the only girl in the room. Okay, we're talking early 80s, uh, honors engineering college at OSU, and um, took some of the beginning computer classes that ever existed at the college level for personal computers. And um, I got real tired real fast of being the only girl in the room. Um, my job during college was at the rec center. I was a fitness instructor, okay? 
And that got me thinking very quickly about, um, and and I don't want this to sound um, arrogant, but like being an attractive girl in the room at the time, not now, <laughs> but at the time when you're in a room full of um, the beginning of, and I use this term with um, with total love because I am I consider myself it, but at the beginning of the geek culture of computer programming, when that was just being introduced into the college situation, I quickly realized that the classes that I was taking to as a an aesthetic break from my engineering classes were my English classes. So um, the first two years of college, I was a physics, chemistry, calculus, engineering person. And the last three years of college were uh, creative writing and uh, humanities and, um, you know, uh, English classes. I loved English classes and I did well in them and I needed them to keep my brain happy to keep me happy. So as I was uh, graduated with a humanities degree from OSU in 87 and um, started looking for work. <laughs> That's tough. Um, so I was still a fitness instructor when I left college and I was teaching aerobics classes and I became a warehouse clerk. And that is shipping and receiving in a warehouse. But the good part was that it was at the warehouse was the micro center. So there were some very smart um, leading edge technology people that I worked with and worked for who helped um, helped helped me define uh, to find literally find what I was good at. And um, when I got my first job, it was as a feasibility study editor. And that is as boring as it sounds. Um, being good at grammar and finding other people's mistakes and knowing what's what uh, how to write a good sentence. At the time, the out the uh, only place you could do that was as a business editor. And uh, real estate fe feasibility is is very dry and um, not interesting at all. So thank God. I had friends who still worked at the micro center who um, would feed me copies of software and I would um, learn the software. This is when um, the Adobe products, Photoshop and, and InDesign were named other things and uh, weren't Adobe products. They were um, Aldous PageMaker, you know, way back when it started. Version 1.0, I was a software instructor for Aldous PageMaker 1.0. So <laughs> I worked a lot of temp jobs for a lot of years, uh, including still fitness instructor, software instructor, and I did desktop, desktop publishing. But like, like Heidi said at the time, when she joined the workforce, most of the women you found were in HR or administrative support. And at the time they were called secretaries. You know, I think the, the role secretary I think it was uh, somewhere in the 2000s where they started removing that from the vernacular at DNR when it came to which type of position you could have. But in the temp world, the application for somebody who was uh, had a technical aptitude, in essence, knew how to use the computer at the time, knew, knew how to use um, to get things to print out and make them look nice for the, the president. You know, I was the... I was the temp fill-in for the executive secretary, you know, so I my bosses were the presidents of these companies and when the executive secretary was going on baby leave. So I had the opportunity to be immersed in a lot of different work environments, understand the processes required for the movement of information, um, and a lot of times it wasn't really communication, right? Uh, it, I mean, it was, as in like this letter has is written from the president of the company to whomever, to this vendor or whatever. So uh, my temp work um, led me to 
my temp work and my technical aptitude, where I, I taught myself how to do things, led me to become a desktop publisher in a print shop, which meant utilizing all that software that I used to teach uh, to create layout. And for everything from business cards to um, catalogs full of pictures and prices and descriptions. Back when things were printed, right? You know, you actually get a catalog in the mail. Um, one of those things, though, the the people that I'd met all along, all of those jobs, though, were influ influential in getting my foot in the door for websites as well. And so as an electronic design specialist now for um, the Office of Communications, my job has always been electronic design as in utilizing the computer to create print layouts, um, presentations uh, at the very early stage of it, and then um, the website. And that's the reason that I actually was hired into ODNR in one of those very initial roles was to, uh, because they just started a website, 1997, their website was like eight months old. And I was hired as um, a worker bee to get content added to their website. And so I've been on the website end of ODNR from the ground floor almost. Um, I missed about a year at the very beginning, but um, I was hired into the division of watercraft as an NRW and they actually created the position electronic design specialist to define the work that I did. So you had artists and you had graphic artists. Um, and I think you even had a layout artist, but it was all it was all hand. Uh, you you done it. You did it by creating words, cutting them out and then gluing them to a piece of paper the way that you wanted. And then you take a picture of that and it would make a plate that would go to the print shop. <laughs> and that's how you got a book. This desktop aspect of being able to create anything on a, on a on a desktop was totally new to state government in 1997. And we were really breaking ground with um, the tools that we were allowed to use, actually computers like a Macintosh um, and printers that would print in color. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> not so much, right? I mean, it, it's nothing to think of getting something printed out now, but it used to be a really big deal. So over my course of being in ODNR, I uh, worked, for, started with the Division of Watercraft. I found that job, got that job because I played volleyball in a rec league, okay? I was still trying to find my way. Played volleyball once a week with a group of people who I met in an outdoor club. Um, Columbus Outdoor Pursuits now, and was playing volleyball regularly once a week, met the woman who was gonna hire me to work for the Division of Watercraft. And so when Heidi talked about how women have influenced her career at least a little bit, I let you know that my very first boss in ODNR was female and her boss was female. And eventually the boss second above me became a chief of the Division of Watercraft. So um, in the Division of Watercraft, when uh, before it was Parks and Watercraft, it was just Watercraft and um, worked in, a, in an amazing public information and education section where I was given, you know, so much power to decide what type of information belonged on the website. And 2013, all of us electronic design specialists, most of us from the, the department were pulled into the Office of Communications. So I've only ever moved my office three times, <laughs> twice while I was in watercraft and I moved into the Office of Communications. And I have to say minus one chair because now, and actually for the last two years before the pandemic, um, I refuse to sit in my chair. I raised my desk up so I can stand at my work, um, mostly because 90% uh, of my life, man, is screen time. 90% of life at DNR for me is being in front of not one screen, but two, and actually right now I'm in front of three. So 
um, the things that keep me sane are, um, you'll see my little, this is my work desk back pre-pandemic, um, although these guys are all still here. The pirate and Gumby and Pokey, like you young ladies should look that up. <laughs> um, and then the uh, Charlie Brown talking to Lucy, that psychiatric help, a nickel. Um, one of the things that I've always tried to do at work for my friends and coworkers is let them be themselves. When they needed to talk to somebody, they could walk into my office, would shut the door at a time when I had a door and, um, and they could spill, you know, um, with the grumpy cat with the blue hat is kind of how I feel when anybody disrupts. I'm, I am ADHD. And if you know that, uh, one of those, um, issues, good or bad, is focus. And boy, I can dive into something really deep. But if you walk into the office and have to get my, like, I am here and I don't even see what's next to me. So um, I can occasionally come off as that grumpy hat, but I will tell you that I do have um, the shiny hat. This one's green, but um, I'm a grumpy cat that wears a shiny hat. So you just have to kind of get past that um, to pull me out. And then the other group you see there is most of the people that I work with. It's not it's not all of them because our team has changed. But that 5% at the state fair is that happy picture of us all outside, really enjoying our outsideness. And um, so that's um, that's that's me. Um, Heidi, I'm going to go to the next slide. Oh, OK, I do have to say I'm going to just say after listening to you and making thinking about the fact that I once typeset as a, a lot of my part time jobs as a proofer and a typesetter for publishing house or when I did temp work like you did clerical temp work, a lot of it really did build on my job once I got, you know, a professional job and what I wanted to do. But I do think you and I are totally the OGs of comms at ODNR <laughs> because you talked about having Macs. I I had the first Mac, one person in comms and one in the art room and me because I need to be able to, after I proofed and worked through, I had to be able to get them to the art room. And again, I had one of the first emails. So I think both of us, and, and maybe that's why I keep talking about feeling young in our, our job, We've been lucky enough actually to be on the cutting edge of doing things for the first time. Yep. So, but anyway, lucky yeah, that I just, before my old lady brain forgot that, I just want to say, so we're totally OGs now. I'm putting it after my signature on my email line. <laughs> so back to you for this one. So one of the questions that we were presented here for a force of nature is how do you affect people's lives? And when I asked Heidi this question, this was her answer. Go ahead. Sorry, I muted myself. Um, when I came to Parks, which is, you know, I've just finished, I'm working on my eighth year at Parks, and I quickly realized that we, we provide the facilities for Ohioans and folks outside the state for their vacation. So they choose to come to our places, our facilities, and they choose to spend their hard-earned money and their free time in our facilities. And it occurred to me, we have so much impact on a person's vacation. And I really hadn't thought about that when I was in other divisions at the department. And the other one that's in here is generations. What I quickly learned also, once I got to get out and get in the parks, um, I spent a few years doing volunteer management in addition to communications, which was a lovely detour in my communications career. But I also found that folks return to the same park. So great grandparents, grandparents, grandkids, parents, they were returning to relive those wonderful times they'd had with mostly family, but family and friends over the years. And that really, that was powerful to me. That maybe the things that I did really did make a difference, you know, in some way. Um, 
the uh, how my job affects other people's lives is like there are like i said seven million visitors that's how many page views ohio dnr gets dot gov gets every year and the caveat is that some people do find what they're looking for making websites is not an easy job you think it should be an easy job or you might think that it's easy when you look at some websites like they have everything you need in them um I know our website can't do everything for everybody, um, but we but we're trying. And of course, with the new website starting in August last year, we're still working on that. So um, even though I'm in front of these screens 95% of the time and I don't get to see the real effect of my work, you know, like you do at the state fair when you're talking to somebody face to face, you, you know whether or not you're answering their questions, right? Um, so this this setup is just, um, you know, I I can only guess by the number of people who don't come screaming at us. <laughs> some of them find what they're looking for. I'm going to add that Janet's being slightly humble. Janet has pretty much helped divisions, uh, several divisions that I've worked in before I worked more closely with her here in Parks and Watercraft. We relied on on Janet and some of her colleagues. We've had at least three iterations of our website that I can remember, plus the very, very original one. And Janet has been there through the entire uh, process over the years. And Janet always finds way to one, consider what the customer wants, telling her coworkers, you already know where things are. We really need to make sure people who, who are finding what they want, that that website is for our external customers. Although we do know that our internal customer, you know, our internal, our colleagues um, rely on it. And she's just done over the years, a marvelous job of pushing the, her clients, whether it's me or somebody, you know, in another division to consider what your customer wants and to consider um, consistency and um, a straighter route to something. So being more effective. So uh, she really is the, uh, I call her the web uh, queen of the web rather than webmaster. But yes, I just have to put that plug in for you, Janet. Okay, so this is me, right? We So I know you guys are all on the edge of your seats because we can't wait to tell you some things that we've learned or would like to pass on to you over the next uh, few slides. And, and I think we'll try to get through these pretty quickly. We're not going to give you an example for everything. Um, I'm a big believer in never read, never list, never read everything on your list on a PowerPoint. Write that down if you don't know it. I say it and then I go into a PowerPoint with my colleagues after I've told them and they continue to read. Your PowerPoint should be your notes. So, OK, that's my first totally unsolicited advice. Janet didn't even know I was going to say it. So <laughs> here we go. Know your audience. And this is. If you study communications, clearly that's something you learn right away. And some of you may be very savvy when you are speaking, no matter who your group is, but it's really important to know who you're speaking to, whether it's generational. We had this conversation earlier about baby boomers, Gen Z, Gen X, millennials. I think of it like this. If you have a proposal, you're going to talk to grandma, mom, and your sister. That same proposal is going to sound different to all three people, right? So it's important to consider generational. Um, so it's not, but it's not just age. It's uh, it, what their background might be. Is it, can you be less formal? Today is definitely less formal. But and I, as you can see, my hands are flying, but I did a presentation about a month ago to our stakeholders with, and I literally sat on my hands because I knew that when I'm talking and I kept to a much more specific script. So those if you think about those things in advance, your communication skills will grow. Um, and the other thing is what are the expectations of your customer? And your customer is not literally the paying public, although in my case, I do have 
the paying public as my customer, but your customer could be your coworker who you're working on with the project. It could be your supervisory or somebody else on an executive staff, and it could be it could be that external person. So you are going to handle your, I hope that you're going to consider speaking or delivering your message a little differently. And so the best piece of advice when you when you start a new job, even if you think you know it all, even I who like feel like I know so much about ODR, what I learned as I shifted from division to division, you can bet your bottom that when I was in the Office of Communications doing media relations and talking about hunting dates and fit uh, and um, uh, conservation and state nature reserve dedications that I went when I went to oil and gas I had to completely not just learn the subject but I had to learn the way that subject is so a lot of words that I'd never heard before or words that I um, and a lot of one you know the thing at government is we all speak in um, initials right <laughs> so I had I had a lot of what's that word called well you guys know what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. I had to talk about so many acronyms and and they used different sets of um, styles for writing. So basically bottom line is take a beat, ask those questions and listen. And I'll tell you what, I'll be the first honest listening is still something I work on every day because I'm a chatty girl. So what I don't want you to be, don't be like Aunt B. If you don't know who she is, <laughs> go take a look don't at Heath Land. And Andy Griffith. Thank you, Andy Griffith. And All she was over. always working herself up into a tizzy over whatever new town gossip was going on. And I'm going to suggest to you, while I love to wear pearls, I have tried, as I've gotten older, I have stopped being, I, I have calm down if you will or I'm a passionate person don't clutch your pearls take a minute take a beat before you answer or ask a question while you wait to determine how you want to respond but yeah don't let them see you clutch your pearls <laughs> your turn Janet oh I yeah Janet on, I need to add on this content okay. this, this speaks to this speaks to what you mentioned before like if you don't know something, you admit to yourself that you don't know it. Um, learn the tools of learn the tools you're going to use. Learn the content you're going to need to communicate. If you don't know about something, find your SME, your subject matter expert, and utilize them to um, to grow yourself. Um, Obviously, in communications, always use reliable sources and understand how those sources may or may not be used against you in the future. Um, at DNR, we have a very interesting dichotomy of, of divisions. We have the natural resources divisions, mineral resources management, oil and gas. It used to be just gas or just oil, you know, and, um, and there's the geological survey, and, and then there's the recreational divisions. But even inside of there, you have nature preserves and hunters, right? The wildlife, that, that's all, that, that's all uh, recreation, but sometimes those, those audiences do not care for each other. So realize that when you are, it is in your power to give the, a perspective, on content, um, make sure that you you understand everybody who might be looking at that. That institutional knowledge exists is the um, not always are you breaking ground. Somebody somewhere knows something about the process or the content or the things that you are are being tasked with, and so uh, seek out the institutional knowledge. Uh, you may be asked to change the institutional process, but you still want to know how it used to be so that you can figure out how you need to to do it now, right? And 
And that's with the technology, with all of the tools that have, have come into play. I love Willy Wonka. If you guys haven't seen the original, you should. <laughs> I won't talk to you if you've never seen the original. There are some movies that are classics. Um, my whole point on this one was I actually found I didn't have to make this meme. It exists out there, you know. Um, oh, you have homework. Life must be so hard. You're going to have homework for your job your whole life. And if you don't, then um, I don't know how you lucked into that job. You know, I'm like, if you, you, you should want to be prepared and, and not that you do it at home. But you'll be doing homework at work for your job. So um, that's all about knowing. There's always things you can know more about to do better uh, as you communicate. I'm going to go on to the next slide. Heidi, are you ready? Yeah. OK, so I'm just I'm going to try to keep this short because I know that we are long winded and I keep I've got my eye on the clock. Hopefully the golden rule pops out at you first. There's all kinds of versions of it. Sure, it sounds like a cliche. All I keep thinking is Barney singing that song when my kids were little, which I wanted to stab myself in the eye, but Barney was right. Thank you, please, and I'm sorry goes a long way. And it's not just in your personal life. I can tell you it goes a really long way professionally. Um, so before you speak up, you need to build some trust with folks, and that comes from listening and acknowledging uh, other points of view. When uh, I highly encourage you to voice your opinions and concerns with a few caveats, and that is please choose your battles wisely. Um, I can tell you that my first few years I was very new and I forgot that I was the only new one in the room. So I would be in a room and have ideas and I would sort of without even recognize it imply that my ideas were better than what they what was being done where really all I was trying to do is encourage change. I've always I've always been a change agent, I think, in my job. But now when I am sitting in that room and now someone younger comes in and they want to change really for the better all these things, it's easy to get um, people's defenses up. So be be really careful what you know that read the room before know your audience. Choose your battles wisely. Um, and when you choose your battles wisely or when you speak up, it's important to know that, you know, I called it WDNR, which was the radio station of the department. Like that's when, say you get a promotion and someone from the field you haven't seen in five years in five minutes calls you and congratulates you and you're thinking, you knew before I knew. What you say has consequences and it travels. But here's what I would like to leave you with, a picture of Heidi. 30 years ago, thinner and cuter and no gray hair, but I used to whisper ideas to my boss or to my more outspoken colleague. My ideas I gave to them because I didn't feel comfortable in a room of people speaking up. And I want to go back to that young lady and tell her you have every right to speak up. That's what they're paying you to do. So remember, you are being paid for your job and sometimes that means expressing opinions or concerns about projects and sometimes that just means being the change agent. Um, so I just want to um, express that you will grow and you will learn by those mistakes, which I think is a good way to move to the next slide. I think we've covered most of this, Janet. And now yeah, I talked about flexibility. Attitude is just, I know for me, tending to be, I wear my emotions on the sleep, my sleeve, which is not a great thing in the workplace, especially in a workplace where you're either young or you're surrounded with a lot of men. Bottom line, it's just not a great thing, but it was who I am and it's still who I am. I just like to think that I've muted myself a little bit, but Attitude is really important and that attitude is really the only thing you can control in your job. When you get up in the morning, you 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 make a conscious choice whether you know it or not to to smile, to have a good day. Yeah, you might have some bad days and um, and it takes a bit, but try not to let it show because that's something 
that people will remember. Your attitude will probably, attitude and being flexible would surprisingly get you farther than talent and experience because people want to work with people who are easy to work with and are fairly friendly. Um, the only other thing on this one is one thing that we talked about is that as I moved into management positions, I was still always uh, auditioning for the role, if you will. OK, P.S. I'm a frustrated actress, but I'm always auditioning for the role. And what that meant was I was keeping such a tight control on programs or projects or special events that I wasn't delegating. And a manager shouldn't be a control freak. A manager should delegate because by delegating, I'm growing and your direct reports are growing and then there's trust and then there's growth by everybody. So I found that that I needed to remind myself and sometimes still when you're a type A personality, are you sharing work with other people on your team that would make your ideas or your drafts better? So I, I can't say that enough when you, those of you who are early management or would like to be a manager, um, remember to delegate. And of course, I've said it before, find some time to be a mentor, um, especially women mentoring other women. Janet mentioned that I was very lucky. My first communications chief was a woman and I learned so she was so gracious and allowing me to try and do anything. And over the career, I've had a lot of male and female supervisors, but I have found that um, the ones that are most memorable be, to me are the ones who have shared themselves or advice or taken me aside. And the and, team player to me, um, having come from a sports background, it's like, you know whether you should be playing shortstop or right field. You know, um, you should know that about yourself, right? And so this this is actually Heidi's meme because she knows she's an introvert <laughs> and it takes a lot out of her to be an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, this is me after a day at the State Fair. I have a love-hate relationship with the State Fair. It's great. It is a lot of fun, but yeah, put a fork in me. I'm done at the end of that day. And um, for me, that um, knowing your strengths and weaknesses as part of the team, what are you good at? I know the people I work with, I don't, I'm not going to say they rely on me to do all of the um, Microsoft Excel work, but they know if a database is involved or a big ugly spreadsheet of information has to come from them, um, they, you know, they know they can ask me for help. You know, so it's, um, yeah. And I know I would prefer, I know I would prefer to work with numbers than people. Their numbers are easier. <laughs> people are hard to figure out. Okay, so, numbers are easier for some people, Janet. Right, they're easier. <laughs> for so um, the last big thing we want to talk about is understanding your personal self inside of your job. So go ahead, Heidi. You're on a good roll. I was gonna, so I think I've touched on it about, there's a lot you're not gonna be able to control no matter where you work. And state government, um, we have different uh, challenges and pressures. Certainly budget and the change of administration can really change the culture of our workplace, but one thing um, that what you can control besides that attitude is you can control your work product um, and you can control your role with your teammates. And I think that's really important that sometimes some of that other business, it it it's it's easy for us to get um, worked up about changes or uh, you know. Policies, policies come and go from, um, but I think also you can be, you can still be a change agent. I was pretty much the first woman at, Ohio, at, at the department who pushed to come back to work after a, um, after my first pregnancy part time. I can't say it was received well, but I had gotten it signed off and there was nothing that anyone could do about it. 
And at the time it was kind of ugly. I don't really remember that as much as I'm really proud because there are a lot of women now who can come back to work part time because I knew at the time I had to show that it could be done. Um, and that so that was a little something in my world that I could control. By. You know, trying you know, to to get somebody to try something for the first time and using myself as a pilot. Uh, use your benefits for me. I think both of us. We've used our training funds. I know I have. It's really helped me grow. So every time there was new technology, like I remember PageMaker. I loved PageMaker. When InDesign came, I thought I was going to die. But actually, I took a lot of classes, and I'm I'm really proud of how much I understand. I may not use it every day, but in the communications world, if you don't, for you know, everything is digital now. Um, everything is social media, and to get myself up up to speed, to get ahead of a trend to be in front of that trend, which I think ODNR has really done a great job. You 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 have to have learning and sometimes the best way is to go outside. So and Heidi, last, we are running yeah. out of time here. Yeah, so we are. I see that. I'm going to go through our unsolicited okay. advice. That sounds good. You are your best. I'm going to let you you take the next couple. OK, um, you are your best communication tool. You, you should know you should know yourself. Um, if uh, what what you bring to your work. Um, so it, it doesn't matter if you don't have PageMaker or layout or whatever, you know, um, use yourself to uh, get your point across because that's the first step. Uh, that's a foot in the door. Um, every time you try something new, you learn more about yourself. This is one of my paintings. I am not a painter, but I went to a woman's weekend, a whoa, whoa, Ohio Women's Outdoor Adventure weekend, and I took a two hour painting thing and I found out I loved it. And I'm like, wow, I, I might be able to do this even just for myself. So um, learn, you know, try something new so that you find out more about yourself. Do you have anything to add there, Heidi? No, except that I'm so impressed. I thought that was clip art. I did not know that was your painting. So there's that. The proportions and are way off. Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, I just love the colors in there. So that's why I chose that one. And, and I think I've already said I love trying new stuff and not everything I've done has been a success, but it did sure teach me a lot about the next time I wanted to try something new. So uh, this one, the uh, one other thing that I love to do is put together puzzles. This is a puzzle that I happened to do when I was on vacation. I found it in the cupboard of the Airbnb I was staying at. Um, and it, you know, use your powers for good. You know, I have a curse that I can find mistakes, but when I use that curse to my advantage, it makes me a great proofreader and great at computer code, you know? so. Um, find your powers and use them for good. And our last our last bit. <laughs> yeah, we actually have an ending. All of you who might have been slightly sleeping the last 25 minutes. That's OK. You cannot miss the Snoky, Smoky Bear slide. We're going out with a gigantic guy. Who you should talk to at the state fair. Absolutely. Of your age. Take the pledge, right, Janet? Take the pledge. Take the pledge and um, understand that even though you might know the back end of stuff, it's allowed you're allowed to still find wonder. In in your in the world around you. Yeah, I, I highly recommend um, if you're inside ODNR, definitely volunteer for the Division of Forestry because it is a blast to work with Smokey and the kids. So we'll put a plug in for forestry. So I don't know if you guys have any kinds of questions. Um, I know I can't see them, so I'll, I'll, I'm sure that the ladies will let us know, but I appreciate having a chance to wax poetic about ODNR. I, I feel like ODNR has become my family, even though it's a government institution. ODNR is the people. ODNR is not the programs. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of all that I've been able to do because of the department and the opportunities. I 
I had, remember I said at the beginning two years and I thought I'd be out the door and then around, and that certainly I stayed in Ohio and then around, um, I think somebody here, whether it was Jackie or Katie or at, is at the five year line. And I started thinking, well, I, I need to grow my career. I need to, and I started interviewing other places and I am so glad I chose to stay at ODNR. It was, and I, I, I get very teary. I, you know, I spent eight years sharing with folks how important state nature reserves are. Uh, little known lands across the, the state that protect the very small remnants of our pre cultural, you know, European cultural settlement um, history. Um, you know, uh, recycling and litter prevention. I would be remiss if I didn't tell everyone to find ways to recycle more and buy recycled material. We don't even have a division of recycling and litter prevention anymore, right? But these are things that were really that became important to me as I learned more. So the last thing I'll say and shut up is that I appreciate that I'm still able to learn something new all the time. Janet, you want to give yourself a little ending? Nope. <laughs> Heidi, you've said it all. <laughs> So with that, I would like to say uh, thank you to Janet and Heidi for participating in today's She's a Force of Nature webinar. Um, today is also our last uh, uh, webinar series um, for the month of, of March. Um, I posted in the QMA box um, ODNR's website link to other virtual programming of events, so I do recommend to check that out. And also on our website to go to the Go and Do tab and look at the rest of our calendar events as well. Um, Kate thank and, you again. Kate and Karst later today. I'm a, I'm a long time caver in a previous life. Yep, there's a lot of thing, um, events out there, so please check it out. And again, thank you and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day. <laughs>